are we? Well, I wanted to talk about the A2MF today. Uh, this is going to be my 2000 round uh, review on it at this point in time, a year into owning it. But I also wanted to talk about a few features about the pistol and some things I think, uh, kind of a maintenance tip or an armorer's tip to help you guys out that are getting your guns uh, now, especially like the C model and the M model. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the A2MF. All right, guys. Well, to start off, uh, if everybody knows, this is gun 007. I've had this L9 A2MF uh, since 2019 in August. Uh, it is after that uh, now. It is almost the end of the year. So we're a year to 16 months into having this pistol, carrying it and using it on a daily basis. And I wanted to talk about it, tell you guys some of the, the features with it. Um, yes, mine's a little bit different than what you're getting now, what's coming out to the market, but the overall, the function, everything's gonna be the same. Mine's just aesthetically a little bit different with the lightning cuts here in the front and the extra serrations on the top. So getting into the pistol, we'll go ahead and break it here. We're gonna break it down and we're gonna talk about it. The actual lower, Let's just start there first. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, the bottom of the lower has different side panels and back straps. Uh, a lot of the C models I'm starting to see, I've had a lot of questions asked to me about it. Um, actually, even in an in-depth, uh, one of you guys sent me where you modified to fix pulling out the retaining pin here that's in the back strap. Uh, I recommend when you get your pistol, yes, you're gonna, you're gonna change the straps, you're gonna get it to fit to your hand. Do not pull this pin and start putting on the different ones and put the pin back in. Sit the house, feel this thing, feel how it fits for your hand on if you want the raised back strap on your knuckle side or if you need it on the thumb side for your fingers to grip around, uh, play the back straps. I noticed in mine that this rear pin is really tight going uh, back in. Uh, you have to put this kind of uh, elevated a little bit. You need a punch set and a small hammer to, to drift this pin back in to, to line it all up. Uh, on the C models, they're really, really tight. Um, some people have actually been using, I believe it's like a 2 or a 2.3 uh, mil drill bit and running it through and kind of clearancing it. My only issue with doing that is it is polymer. If you're clearancing it, you could have a slight issue of the pin trying to drift or fall out. Uh, you might need to kind of mushroom one of the ends to make it retain. So be careful if you uh, are doing that modification to your pistol and trying to enlarge the holes for the pin to go in and out faster. Um, it is really designed to you kind of set your gun up the way you want the first time and then don't mess with it. Uh, there's just, I personally don't see a reason that you'd want to pull the back straps off multiple times or constantly be changing them out. Uh, the whole reason behind the MF was modular. It's to fit your hand, you build the gun, make it fit the way you want, and then run with it. So, uh, spend some time, dry fire, you can put all these components, uh, the side, you know, left and right hand side, uh, palm swells, the back straps, there's three different ones. Sit and play with it, throw it in your holster, they will stick and hold on there. Uh, worst case is take a small rubber band and put it just around the bottom of the flare magazine well and then you can put your hand onto it if one starts to slip. But that'll save you the issues of the pen being uh, damaged or breaking one. The other thing is make sure when you put all this back together, make sure the holes line up on the inside here. Make sure everything lines up when you drift that pin in. Uh, it really does suck if you get one and you bend it out. So. There's uh, that armor's tip. Uh, second question I get all the time is, will a A1 fire control group fit inside the MFA2? Uh, no, uh, it won't fit for two reasons. One is, uh, we'll just do, we'll do the legal one. Really, really, uh, we'll start that one off. That way, uh, it's out of the way and said, on the MF, what the serialized portion of your pistol is the fire control group. That is what the little cutout here is for, that's where you're gonna read your serial number. When you pull out your fire control group, that is the serialized uh, FFL portion of your pistol. The polymer frame isn't, the whole upper uh, barrel slide assembly is not. It is this lower. So on a legal standpoint, you cannot put a A1 
into this because on an A1, it is your polymer lower that is the registered item because it has a serial number here underneath the Picatinny rail. So legally, no, they will not fit. Do not do that. You will get yourself into a felony. Uh, guaranteed if you're caught, it'll be an unregistered gun. The other thing is, it is actually here in the back of the pistol. The MF is designed, it has different uh, lugs and where it goes into the pistol. And it is, this one here is much long, is different setup. The other one has staves in the back that go into it and they're just set up differently. So they do not uh, function that way. Now, your components that build your trigger pack, like all of your uh, sear springs, your trigger springs, all of those components um, are interchangeable. So the MFA2, your A1, you know, if you break a trigger, break a spring, you need something, those parts are interchangeable. It is just actually the, the full steel structure of the fire control group itself, the main housing, which is different. So that gives you an option. Uh, if you want to play around with magazine releases and bend one to get a little bit more for your thumb, um, it's the same release. So you can actually buy that part and change it out. Trigger shoe, the trigger cup is all the same. Your magazine releases are the same. All those springs, everything inside there is the same. It's just the physical frame is uh, different. So that gives you guys an answer to that. I see a ton, ton of those questions. Uh, please, for the legal standpoint, don't do that. Like, don't, don't try to modify an A1 and, and stuff it into this thing. Uh, don't do that. You're gonna get yourself in a lot of trouble. So moving on into the upper. Uh, the upper is the same as a Gen 4. It just has different markings. Uh, there's nothing uh, really improved that I can say on here. The serrations are still really good on the left and right hand side. Uh, it does have your serial number. It says A2 or L9A2MF. Um, so the logoing, the markings are different. It still has the Manox finish. You still run your trap sights. Like the whole upper is still as fabulous as the Gen 4 uh, L, L upper. Now on the M and the C model, uh, they do differ a little bit. They actually are running serrations. I'm starting to see those. Uh, it wasn't something I originally saw on the prototype guns at SHOT Show, uh, at least that I can remember. I, hey, memory fades. It's been a couple years since uh, I was at SHOT Show and actually tabletop this one. I don't remember because I was only really interested myself in the L model. So sorry, I'll have to go back and review some of my footage to see if they did, but top of my head, I don't remember them having it. But the new MF on the M and the C um, actually have forward serrations. So that's an awesome thing. I think that's great. And I think I need to add an M to my collection. So that gets into it. Your barrels, uh, your barrels for the A1 and the MF are the same. So if you guys want threaded barrels, uh, Steyr sells those. Just make sure you get the right thread pitch. There is a European 13, is it 13.5 by one or is it 13? One, 13 by 1.5. I don't remember the, the European pistol caliber. I think it's 13 and a half by one. Or you can get the half by 28 US. But if you want a threaded pistol barrel, it, you can get the A1 barrel. They work perfectly. The other thing is on guide rods. Uh, I actually upgraded. I put a metal guide rod into mine. Uh, working on getting more of these uh, produced and done. But this is one of the older Ranger Point Precision ones. If you happen to come across one for an L model or the M model, they will work in your MF. So if somebody happens to you know have one or they come up for sale, uh, they do work. And remember, if you want to change out spring pressures on a uh, steel guide rod, uh, you can use the flat-faced uh, Glock style uh, springs if you want. So that runs there. Lockup, holdup is still all the same. All your your key. Uh, ergonom ergonomical, that's a hard one today, uh, work really well. The big difference in this pistol, and we'll set this one here for a second. Most of you are, are all familiar with the original Steyr pistol. Just for those that are seeing the video and you're not, you're looking, you're like, well, I don't, what's the difference? It is that the new one is actually more squared. So, if you've got really big hands, and I get this question asked all the time of, which one should I buy? I see an A1, I can get a really good deal on it, uh, or should I hold off and try to find, you know, the unicorn, get the, the MF? 
And for the last year, it's kind of been that way. Um, they're really now hitting the market and getting out there. It's kind of a personal preference, guys. I really, really like my A1s, um, and I've modified. You guys have seen the VF1 that I've done with all the custom stippling. This grip is the very, very best polymer grip pistol I've ever used. When they did the MF, uh, I mean, they really went to town on it. They changed up, they added a lot of more texture. So if you're into texture, you're gonna want the MF. I mean, a lot of a lot of complaints on the A1 was it was a little bit slick. It had to have grip tape or a stipple job, you know, if you got wet hands. But I really never had that issue. But I will say when I stippled my, my A1, it, night and day difference. I mean, I've got three different variants of texture and I really like my stipple one most of all, this is the second best, but the A1 is the old friend. You put it in your hand and it runs perfectly. But into the MF, uh, it's still got all the same tear ducts, you know, the cuts. These uh, horizontal striations are just aesthetic. They actually don't do anything. They're not really gripped to get your thumb up to make a drive point or to latch your nail into. The, the grip texture, the front here, I like it. And what I tell people is if you're small handed, you're probably gonna like the A1 better. If you've got big, you know, paws like I do, guys, I wear a size 13 to 14 ring. I mean, I've got a massive hand. I mean, here, I'll give you a comparison. That's a full size, you know, L9, A1. All right, here, I'll hold it here. That's my hand completely opened up. I mean, I can take and rotate. My hand is almost, it's actually bigger than the gun. So for me, I prefer the, this grip panels, the extra large ones, it fits my hand, and I notice that my fingers don't wrap around and touch the back side of my uh, palm, like what happens on the M on the A1. It gets back over here, and if I really get up on this and drive it, you know, my fingers get really close back here. So I like this one that it eats up a little bit more of my hand space. But you guys are here, you wanna know about a shooting review. Um, Real quick, we're gonna go over a quick maintenance tip, armor's tech tip for you guys. Um, I get literally once a week, someone's asking me, hey, I'm having a, a failure to extract, ejection issues, I just bought one. First and foremost, as soon as you buy any gun, I don't care who it's made by, clean it. Read your book, take it apart, totally clean it. When they're built at the factory, they put grease in these things, they put Cosmoline still in a few guns, uh, they don't do a really good job at cleaning them. They shoot them, they oil them, they pack them, and they've been sitting, who knows, they, you know, depending on who they're shipped from, where they come from and what part of the country. I mean, they, could, have, they be, could be sitting on a store shelf for six months. Take your gun apart, totally do a deep clean on one of these, like almost a complete dismantle, clean everything you can get a hold of. Uh, it will save you a ton of headaches. Now, specifically to the Sistire, I tell everybody it is the extractor pocket port up here in the top you guys need to pull out the extractor I've got videos on it you can google it here on YouTube uh, you can you know check it out over there basically you need a small flat blade screwdriver you're gonna enter just behind the extractor you push in at an angle kind of kick it forward it pops out the spur and the spring this pocket uh, gets grease into it the springs have you know when they first build the guns there might be a little uh, Manox in here. That is the key issue that needs to be cleaned out. Just pull it out, take a Q-tip, run it through there with some solvent, and I use just rim oil, just a cheap spray. I mean, you can use WD-40 if you really wanted to. Clean it out, dry out that pocket, and then reassemble everything with it being clean. Just put it all back together. That will solve a lot of problems. Uh, the only other thing I can tell you about is inside your actual trigger and barrel break-in. Make sure you oil up your trigger system. This is during the break-in of the barrel. These barrels are match grade barrels. They're really tight. As soon as you get your gun, and this I do this on all all, all guns. Does I don't care if it's the granted on a high point, but if you bought a high point, do it on it too. If you get into like Wilson Combats or uh, Nighthawk custom build 1045s, first hundred rounds, shoot. 10 rounds, take the mag out, clear it, clean the gun. Like just do a simple, use a very simple uh, cleaning kit. TV magic. Uh, 
just a, a range kit. This one's from Real Avid. It's got all your major calibers in it that you need. It's got plenty of, of length and rod. It's got some patches and stuff. I think you can get one of these kits. Oh, uh, I think they're like 20 bucks, maybe 30. I mean, it does, doesn't matter. This is an awesome kit. It's super thin. Uh, it even does the whole stand up thing. So, I mean, guys, this isn't a sponsor video for Real Avid, but like, I like their stuff. It works. Like, it's simple and it, I like it because it's neat and clean. Uh, and it fits into the range bag. I mean, it's not even the size, it's the size of like an eight inch tablet. But grab yourself, doesn't matter. Get yourself a cleaning kit, simple. A little bit of oil, 10 rounds in your in your gun, shoot shoot 10, that, that's it. Open it up, run a bore brush, you know, pop it apart. Take a little bit of that spray oil. Uh, like I said, I like uh, Remington's, uh, just their spray oil, it works. It cleans all the gunk, the carbon out of it. Do that for the first 100 rounds. Uh, after the 100 rounds, you'll probably need to clean out the extractor pocket just to make sure that, you know, something didn't come off or, you know, you brought something up that the Q-tip didn't get out. After that, you shouldn't have any issues, and that's kind of the break-in period. That'll help the barrel. Uh, you won't mess nothing up, and it'll help with your accuracy, and it also will uh, help the just the whole life expectancy of the gun. Now, granted, I did I did that on this pistol. I've done it on a few others. Others, I go to the range. I do a 500-round break-in that day, and that was when ammo was super available and you know didn't cost you three months of rent. But if you get out, shoot your gun, do, do a break-in, even if it's like 15 rounds. I always tell people 10, because it works. You do it 10 times, takes you an extra half an hour at the range. Just take, keep, get your bore brush, get everything set up, shoot 10, clean it out, flush out, make sure, because you're gonna get copper fouling. And that's the key thing, is you're getting the barrel set up, you're, with it being ultra match or match grade barrels, you're gonna start seeing a lot of copper fouling, especially in like Filochi ammo and uh, Sarah and Bella, the SMB ammo. I used to be a huge fan of SMB. I only shot that in my 357 or 40 cal, but here recently their copper uh, jacketing has gotten like super thick and on match grade or ultra match grade barrels, I mean just a ton of gold copper fouling gets inside. So, that's kind of one issue or, you know, thing I've always noticed it, especially with the Steyr pistols, because of the way that they're built or because they're built to a higher tolerance than like, you know, a, a Springfield or an M&P or your Glock. I mean, those have a little bit more tolerance room that's inside of them. The Steyr is built a little bit tighter, so just make sure you clean it and that will solve a lot of issues. Okay, let's get into the actual, you know, 2,000 plus rounds. Um, I'm a year into it. I can honestly say I've probably shot about 5,000 rounds, but 2,000, I've got documentation for, I've got video, I've shot, um, I've carried this for a year. Issues with it. Um, first and foremost is when I first got it, the texturing. Uh, I like to wear appendix or I wear inside the waistband. As soon as you put on these uh, bowed out side panels, the extra large side panels, and you're a little bit fluffy on the one side, uh, I got some chafing. Uh, it just, it happens. Like it, the, it's not as smooth as an A1. It really not the pistol fault. It's a body shape, body placement of where you put it, but an, an issue nonetheless. Um, for a little while I had had some rub marks and I had to adjust and work the holster and you know my placement and fitment so do be aware if you try to appendix this or you stick it up you know right up into a love handle um, this thing's gonna chafe you and it's gonna kind of you know scrub you a little bit uh, no different than grip tape or anything else that you get in there but that is something that's noticeable the other thing like I said this one was a bit more finicky on the break-in uh, I, you know, Steyr's got into the really having the match grade barrel, so the break-in was uh, a bit more time-consuming. So, you know, that first 100 rounds where you normally do it in 20 minutes or 30 minutes was an hour. So, I've noticed it, but everything else with the pistol uh, has been fabulous. I mean, it's really no different than any of my other Steyr pistols. Quality's there, there's nothing that's moved, opened up, twisted. Uh, had issues with, broke anything. Um, I've done two demo days with this and I've tossed it to a couple other YouTubers to shoot, told people to you know go to town on it. And I haven't had a misfire, 
haven't had a light primer strike, haven't had a stove pipe, I've had no mechanical issues, failures, or ammunition failures. Uh, I use a lot of Winchester white box. I use Georgia Arms uh, ammo, bulk, bulk ammo. I've done some of the Felucci's. Uh, I'm now shooting and getting into uh, Defiant ammunition. Um, I've running it fine. I've ran G2 Research ammo, their RIP, their ta uh, Talos ammo. Uh, I'm trying to think. Of not a lot of hollow points, basically those last three companies for some hollow points. Uh, ball ammunition is probably 80% of what I shoot, and it's been 115 grain up to a few plus P's. I've probably done 500 rounds of 147 plus P ammo. The only thing that I have changed uh, in this, and I'm a huge uh, fan for it, is the solid guide rod. Now, I know they're not available at this current moment because Range Point Precision uh, has decided to stop making aftermarket parts. Um, I just had a phone conversation with them and trying to see you know, if that's gonna change for 2021. Um, I've told you guys before, I'm trying to do, maybe do something. Uh, so that's in the work. I'm hoping first of 2021, uh, we'll have an answer uh, one way or another. Uh, we'll see about getting some more aftermarket parts or if I can find someone that's going to step into that uh, that field to do it. But that's that's really it, man. It's a short and simple review. I hope the information helps and lines up for everything. But I've had I've had no mechanical failures, issues whatsoever with this pistol. Um, it's just kind of the chafing thing. So I hope that helps and makes decisions if you which pistol that you want. If you want to go to the you know old a1 or if you want to get the brand new one uh i mean both are awesome pistols i think you'd be happy with both i uh, definitely recommend if you're if you're really torn between the two uh, see if you can get your hands on both and actually feel uh the grip itself is 99 percent the difference in the gun so i hope that helps and like i said if you need a cleaning kit uh, check out Real Avid. They've got them. I mean, most local gun stores have them. If not, go right over to their website. You can pick them up, and it's just a good kit. They make a ton of other stuff, too, I use. So, hope that helps. Have yourself a good one.